Before this video gets started, I want you to know that we're really gonna go through our YouTube analytics, how much money we make off of YouTube, and we're even gonna tell you what we spend it on. So stick around, it's gonna be later in the video, but I promise we're actually gonna show you screenshots of ours to show you exactly what we make. As you can tell, we're not in Missouri right now. We're on a road trip. I'll show you why soon. I'll give you a hint. We're in a state that produces a lot of pork. I was going to show everybody your moves over there. Oh, okay. So, we're kind of at a pause on some stuff. Can't really do much here because it's filled with water. So, I'm going to have to pump that out. But, the last part of the video you saw us driving around or saw me driving around in Iowa and we picked up four things and three of the things spent all the money <laughs> from YouTube already so we bought the trailer uh, we did sell our other one or selling our other one is somebody's supposed to come look at it tonight but this was a hydraulic dovetail trailer so it's gonna work out well for us we'll go over that a little more later the uh, rocket ship and the two feed troughs we're going to use those instead of making our own creep feeders we actually just bought these they're cheaper than the materials i'd need to make our own so we bought some stainless steel hog feeders and we're going to put them in there in the pens since the sheep the adults got kicked out or will get kicked out here in the next hour to the pasture we'll we won't have to put any creep feeder panels around that but we will make some and we'll show you how we make them this right here is going to get rid of our gravity wagon and part of the reason is, is that the sheep know and have figured out oops, sorry blood dust on there just realized that know and have figured out how to open the uh latch oh, yeah. <laughs> on, on the gravity wagon so now anytime you let them out they run straight over there and mess with it so we've uh had to wire it shut a few times just to make sure that they stop doing it Sometimes yeah. they figure out how to open the gate too. So if you're curious of how we spent all of our YouTube money, this is it. And we'll go over it more here in a little bit. But first we got to get the sheep out and uh, get them back on this nice, green, beautiful grass that has grown. Thank God. But they'll have to be watched closely. Yeah. The first the, Yeah. So we're actually going to grain them. So when we put them out, we'll put them, put all their grain in their trough over here. And the reason being, like Chrissy mentioned, they will gorge themselves on fresh green grass because just like anybody else everybody likes you know fresh good foods compared to eating leftovers i guess you could call it so at that point it makes it to where what are you two doing she missed me so at that point it makes it to where they're going to gorge themselves and they can easily get bloat from just stuffing themselves with grass. But we are glad to see it being green and spring is well on its way. A little cold snap today, but it'll be over today. Uh, yeah. I guess this stuff's not gonna unload itself, is it, Bella? So where's the frisbee? Just to touch base a little more. So that grain bin, that we'd call it a bulk bin, We'll go right there where the gravity wagon's at, and it'll be more convenient for us because one, it'll take up less space. Two, they can't break into it. Oh. All right, so real quick, just to kind of address what we're doing. Right now, we're sorting, and the barn is not necessarily the most efficient or effective way to sort, but it does work. We've got everybody pushed up here now, lambs and the moms that have recently given birth. So within the last eight weeks that they gave birth, they're staying in here with their babies for a little bit longer. So we're going to grab the ram lambs and we'll throw them in there for now because somebody's coming to look at all them. And then we're going to throw all the ewe lambs in the other side and then the, well, the adults that are staying and the ewe lambs that are staying are gonna go in these two pens over here. 
Ram lambs only in that pin. And then in here is the ones that we accidentally let in, so we gotta kick them out. Or they need tagged because they've ripped their tags off, so we're gonna give them a new tag and then kick them out. Sound like a plan, Stan? Yep. Why aren't you, why aren't you done yet? All right, so just to explain a little bit what we're doing. This is our gate guard. She does a good job holding the gates, making sure that nobody gets out. These guys have already been sorted. These are all ones that have babies that are old enough that they don't need the mom anymore. They need to be weaned. So they're gonna go out on pasture. We'll get the rest of these guys that are either moms or not staying here sorted, and then we'll get them out with them. So YouTube revenue, we're just going to cut to the chase. Wife and I work full-time jobs. I'm a soldier, wife's a uh, teacher's assistant and going to school to get her degree to be a teacher. So it sounds silly, but right now we work in order to be able to farm. The paychecks from our normal jobs are what started this farm. That's what paid for the land. That's also what paid for the barn, paid for the sheep, paid for the equipment paid for everything we have not seen any profit whatsoever and we won't for a little while because we're building a farm it takes time so regardless we're gonna have to work for a little while YouTube does help offset some of our costs not a lot I'll just be honest we don't get a lot of views um, our contents more driven towards people that want to see uh, sheep farms or they want to see how to start a farm stuff like that and that's okay we're not in this to make money we don't have big shiny equipment to attract a bunch of viewers we don't have a massive farm to do that either so we're okay with that but we're gonna be upfront with you all about the YouTube revenue we make roughly and I'm gonna show you the, the screenshots from my phone of what we make but generally we make somewhere around five to six dollars for every thousand views on our channel. So whether it's from this video or the next video or previous videos, every thousand views from the video will make about five dollars to six dollars. And it's gonna be more exact when I show you this photo. And then over, so right now, year to date, one year of us being monetized as a YouTube channel will be May 3rd. And so far, today is March 19th, 20th, might be the 20th. Anyways, we have made $500 almost, we're like $10 shy of it, in 11 months, 10 and a half months, I guess. And we spent all that money on this rocket ship. No, it's not really a rocket ship, it's a grain, uh, well, a grain bin or a bulk bin. There's lots of different things people call them, but that's what we call them as a bulk bin. That's what we store our feet in. And first and foremost, I honestly just want to thank you all for watching these because that is $500 that I didn't have to spend from my paycheck to buy something for our farm. So that is convenient. But on the flip side, out of all of the videos that we've posted, right? I've got to look and see what the numbers are exactly, but it's like, oh, it's well over 100 videos, 130 videos or 140 videos. All those videos, it takes roughly about three, maybe four uh, hours between filming them all, transferring the, the files to the computer, editing it, and then getting it started to upload. It takes hours for it to upload because our internet's slow, but I don't really count that because once it's uploading, I don't really have to do anything with it. So when you think about it, right? So most of our videos get 500 views, maybe a thousand. So let's just say on a thousand views, <clears throat> we made six bucks off of it, right? But I've got four or five hours in it. I mean, the amount of time and effort I've put into it, I'm not doing this for the money. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. We're just honestly trying to help others that want to start a farm too, but we sincerely appreciate this. So thank you all for viewing. I hope the video was helpful and I hope that you keep coming back. And we also have people that have given us advice and we really appreciate that too. So please, don't stop that because sometimes the advice you guys come up with makes it far easier than what we were thinking in our heads and it's much better advice. So thank you. Have a great day. Have a blessed week and we'll see you next time. So an important note, 
These guys just went out on pasture yesterday, and you can see that there's still a lot of green grass in there. The concern is, is that if they, when they go to a new pasture, even on rotational grazing, you need to watch them because if they eat too much grass in too short a time, it will cause bloat and it can kill them. So make sure you're mindful whenever you're rotating them and check on them. We checked on them last night, everybody seemed okay. We're just checking on them again this morning because overnight, they're really not that active. But in the mornings, they are very active, just like anything else. They like to eat early in the morning and then kind of lounge around a little bit in the afternoon and then they eat again in the evening. So again, make sure that if you're doing something like that, make sure that you're checking on them. Um, these guys being out here already for this long, at this point, now we're gonna be okay. Obviously we need to check them when they go to the next pasture, which will be tomorrow morning. We'll check them in the, you know, probably like an hour or so after we rotate them just to make sure that nothing, uh, you know, they hadn't gotten too much grass in them or anything like that. But I just wanted to point that out. Make sure that you're checking on them when you're putting them. You're going from straight hay or hay and grain to straight pasture, you gotta check on them.